wasn't gay, I probably wouldn't be Catholic. Because growing up with the experiences I have of homophobia and queerphobia, um, being the invisible minority, that's how I connect to God, through those experiences. At the Rainbow Resource Center, I am one of our student staff. I've been working here since I started my sophomore year. It's part of why I'm here, uh, why I'm here at Santa Clara. I am Catholic, a practicing Catholic. Um, I'm also gay. I wanted to be somewhere where I could be both. Um, Santa Clara is the, one of the very few uh, Jesuit schools in the nation or the world where I can do that. My faith and values, what I believe in, um, community service work, uh, working with the disenfranchised, um, the people that the at least church hierarchy has defined as others. Um, it's what Jesus did. <laughs> I'm not saying that we're all prostitutes and tax collectors, um, but sort of we are in a sense, that's how we're treated. For all the faculty here to worship, for Santa Clara University, for St. Clara Parish, and for all those who seek God. Lord, in your mercy. I first met Glenn uh, his freshman year. Uh, he came to the liturgical ministries formation evening. Um, he wanted to um, offer his services in Eucharistic ministry and possibly other ministries in the church. Um, that was my first encounter with Glenn. Um, and Glenn was, was, you know, this white, blonde kid from the Midwest, um, you know, <laughs> um, and very earnest um, um, and, and very dedicated to his faith. A lot of it has to do with growing up gay in Missouri, being Catholic, and then spending nights crying myself to sleep, praying to God, asking him, A, make me straight, or B, just, I don't wanna be here. And I didn't hear anything. No message, no thunder, no burning bushes. And that was rough. Technically, the church teaches that s certain kinds of things are not to be um, sort of engaged. And then includes a lot of things. So it includes sort of um, any kind of sexual activity that's outside the context of sacramental marriage. Anything, right? So that includes a lot of people <laughs> doing a lot of different things. My connection to God is through my connection to Christ. And how on a emotional level, there's a sameness, um, being born into a family that won't understand you. They have expectations for you that are wrong. Society tells you to be one thing, you're not that thing. So I think in some ways people who are, who are um, uh, LGBTQ and Catholic, um, have to deal with the fact that both sides, both communities, look a little strangely at the other community. So you might have some uh, Catholics who would say, how could you possibly be a gay person? How could you even say the word? You know, we don't believe in that. Which is untrue, you know. Um, we do believe in gay people. We do believe that they exist. We do believe. So, but, but you have some people who really don't see the world in that way, right? So you have that kind of group of people. What would it be like to be one of the disciples in the crowd, like not saying anything, but seeing everyone jeer at Jesus, throwing stones, spitting, and you're not doing anything? Like I, I could understand mentally 
what that would be like, but I didn't feel, I didn't feel anything. Everyone was throwing the stones at me. I have had conversations uh, with with folks who are, I mean, all of what they've been told is that this is antithetical. You know, Jesus hates queers. You know, I mean, they may not say it that crassly, but it's that's the message. Or softly, love the love the sinner, hate the sin, kind of thing. And so, people whose faith I can't say this because they don't know them, but if your faith is calling you to do hateful things then your church community and leadership needs to be focusing on how do you love yourself first? Because I really think that if you're killing someone because they're gay or transgender for your faith, and if you say that you're disgusted by them because of your faith, you're probably disgusted by yourself. I feel like what needs to happen is that people's lives need to emerge and we then need to reflect on what is emerging without somehow layering on it all of our presumptions about what's right and what's wrong or what's whole or what's not whole. Um, I think there's a lot of listening to do. I think there's a lot of reflecting to do. And I would hope that there would be less condemning to do. For me telling them you're wrong is like a really small earthquake and they're in that house and they can hear the foundation cracking. It's super scary. And no one wants that foundation to break. So the more loving thing to do is to respond in a way that would help them rebuild the foundation. But another way of, look, of looking at it, and in, in a way that I look at it in my own life, I think it's the way that Glenn looks at it in his life, is that it's also an opportunity. That these are two things that mean a great deal to him. And he's not willing to let go of either for the sake of the other. And that he, in some way, is the occasion of synthesis, right? He is the occasion of some kind of synthesis. And in my view, I just think that synthesis is a, a very graceful one and it's one upon which God smiles partly because I think it's only through people who attempt this kind of integration that we as a society begin to move forward and begin to say that everybody deserves to be able to have a sexual identity, a gender identity, and a religious identity. That, that, one does, that these, uh, these allegiances don't have to be exclusive. I got a very clear message that God is love and God loves each and every one of us. Now, some people say that that's a super simple message, but in reality, that's the bottom line. Because um, if that's not there, or if we are unsure of that love, or we doubt that love or our lovability, um, our lives are, are less than what God would want them to be. There's a story of a girl who didn't know how to pray. And so one night when she was saying her prayers before going to sleep, she would just sing her ABCs. And after a few days, her parents were like, why is she singing her ABCs? I'm like, that's not a prayer. <laughs> and so they asked her, and then she said, oh, well, I don't know what to pray for, so I'll just give God the letters, and then God will turn it into the words that I need. God, I'm gay, I can't change myself. This is who I am.